Hello, race fans. Welcome to another episode of Short Track Guys Podcast, brought to you in part by McDonald Muffler, the Muffler Mafia based out of Mobile, Alabama. They're a family-owned and operated muffler shop specializing in converters and shocks and much more. Give those guys a call. It's 251-661-1043. That is McDonald Muffler, the Muffler Mafia in Mobile, Alabama. I'm your host, Thomas Faddis, alongside two of the same short track guys in the studio as always, Jim Pokran, driver of the 07 Can't Quit Fishing.com Sportsman and 2021 Sportsman Champion, and Ted Baber, the Ted Baber Video Productions. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? What's up? Let's get her done. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get her done, all right. And we didn't have anything to bring to you for Five Flag Speedway this past weekend, but we had a huge event just a little west of that in Mobile. Great show is what I can tell you. Awesome show. It was, uh, loads of cars. <laughs> yeah, it, and you got to thank Eddie Shoemaker, dude. He he got that place up and running in a matter of weeks. Concessions were – the food was good. He had plenty of it. We ran out – we've run out in the past, and that's that's no good look. But I'm going to tell you, they had some hiccups. But for the hiccups that he had, it was a great show. There was 83, 84. I think it was 83. Yeah, something like heard, that. Huh? Cars there. There was only six or seven Pro Late Models. But the Crown Vicks showed up in force. There was 25 of them, <laughs> I think, God. 21, 25, somewhere around there. There was uh, 17 sportsmen. Wow. And there was seven or eight pure stocks. They only had five of the legacy stocks. But, you know, that's a class that they've been trying to do over there, and it's not as good as it was. But the racing made up for it. The grandstand was packed. The infield was so full of people driving in, they had to stop cars from coming in because they had nowhere to park anybody. That's that's what you want to see on opening night. <laughs> oh, definitely. And, you know, shout out to Eddie and his crew and Jason Smith and those guys. Man, they worked hard. And, I mean, they did, They they weren't 100% prepared, but, boy, they got things rolling. We had trouble with the tire machines to begin with, and then the guy that was supposed to change tires didn't show up, and then some other guy finally showed up, and they started changing tires. Everybody got tires. Everybody got everything they needed, and Eddie and them did a great job, and they're running again in next, not this weekend, but next weekend over there which we went over and raced. We didn't do too, too bad. We qualified 11th, and we were running in the top 10, and I had a brake issue, so I parked the car, but I had fun. I got to give a shout-out to Jeremy Peebles, who is a, a guy that's got a late model. He's fixing to start running around this area. He's a Coast Guard member. He came to the races and gave us a hand. Martin was there. My buddy Devin uh, drove over from Pensacola to help us out. I'm thankful because, man, it was so hot Saturday and uh, I started a second job. I worked till noon and then went over there. And I'm going to tell you something. The heat was incredibly bad. <laughs> I didn't even make it because of that. I got dehydrated. I could not go. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, the for the heat and the things that went on, the racing was good. They only had one fight. So, I mean, you know, in <laughs> Alabama, they only had one fight. So, it wasn't a bad night. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, the grandstands were full for what he had. You know, Eddie still got some repair to do on the yep. grandstands. We know that. Yep. But uh, the, the entire section they had there was completely full of people. The Like I said, the concessions were good. It's a huge shout out to Eddie and his guys. Y'all did a great job. As a racer, I appreciate you. As a fan, it was even better. Just keep going with what you're doing. Yeah, talking about reopening with the bang of the Pro Late Models, Pure Stock, Sportsman, Pro Trucks, and yeah. uh, the Legacy and the Crown Vicks. Now we've got a we've got a little segment. This is week three, and we're going to get to it in a little bit towards the end uh, with our Spotlight Driver of the Week. Uh, that's going to come up. We're going to let the cat out of the bag too early, but nope. that's going to come up. But man, I heard about the crowd. I heard about the racing. Uh, I wasn't able to make it as well. Um, but what a good night and congratulations to everybody over there and making it a success. That's what you and, call a um, kickstart yeah. right there. <laughs> oh yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, Augie won the pro lates, which was cool to see Augie grill yeah. and Dustin Smith battle it out in the Agricola number four. number four and the trucks was won by Oki Mason and Steven Davis run second and Dustin Smith third. And everybody loves old Oki and to see him get out there and get it done was really cool. And Steven, he's another mobile famous guy that oh, yeah. gets it done and Dustin Smith. All three mobile drivers that are tough. Dustin finished second in the Pro Late model feature, so he had a pretty good night. Yeah. yeah. Isn't uh, Oki one of those guys we've talked about that's been around for a while, won like five championships in, in a season? one mm-hmm. year. You see, yes. yeah, no, he won six. <laughs> yeah. He mm-hmm. won the trucks and the modifieds in Mobile and Pensacola. Then he won both Gulf Coast championships, right. which is for the, the most points accumulated in both racetracks and modified and trucks. So it was actually six total that year. He's got a lap or two around that place. Yeah. All right, just a few. <laughs> just a few. I met him when I was 12 years old at Flomington Speedway. Oh, boy. 
And he goes, oh, I wasn't but 14 at the time. I said, no, Oki, no, <laughs> no, you was a little older than that. I remember meeting you, but yeah, that was, oh, it was good to see an old guy like that get it done. Oki's a great guy. He, yeah. He's one of the people that's always in a good mood, always will talk to you. He's just a great guy. Congratulations to him. And to beat Steven is a, is a chore and to beat the money that Dustin Smith has is another chore. So yeah. that was a great race. Yeah. Yeah. Pure stocks put on another good show too with Jimmy Hollinsworth, Robert Loper and Robert Barber. Let oh, me tell yeah. you something. That was a show. They they swapped the lead back and forth. I don't know how many times, and Hollingsworth just barely got him. Hmm. So that was a that was a good race. Congratulations to those guys. And Loper, I think that's a new ride for him. And uh, you know, Robert Barber, he's always in the hunt. He's won yeah. a couple in Pensacola this year, yes, and he's he has. he's right there for the championship between him and Oki Mason's grandson. So yeah. that's going to be a good show. Yeah, and we got the sportsman. I know we touched a little bit on uh, uh, Jim's. Uh, not so much success over there, but I mean, I had he, he did have he had fun, and he comes home not spending a whole lot of money. Yeah, that worked out well. Like I said thanks to Jeremy Peoples, and I got to thank uh, Alan Alexander from Texas. He bought us two tires to come over there, and uh, I got to appreciate him for that. And uh, battled with him right there with him for a while during that race, and then I, I lost brakes. But congratulations to B.J. Latham on his win, and uh, I know that Daryl was third, and I think Jonathan was second. Wasn't Maddox. He? Maddox yeah, was sick. Maddox. Okay. Yeah. One of the Langhams, because there was three of them in that race. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but congratulations to those three guys, because they put on a pretty good show. I, I got to see some of it for about 10 laps, and then the brakes went away, and I faded. But mm-hmm. I think I think we not, we dropped out with like four laps to go. I just didn't want to risk wrecking the car. But congratulations to BJ on his win. Um, that's one of his first of this season. He had not yeah, He had one to me. That, had the you know. best of luck. <laughs> Yeah, first but, of first of many. I'm I'm sure about that. Yeah. And then the legacy class with Cole Peavy, Van uh, Rayburn, and JJ Day. That yeah. uh, that was that was kind of interesting. Yeah, they, they ran. I, it was funny. I was standing in the pits watching them. I'm like, man, these guys are putting on a pretty good show. With two to go. They just started wrecking. It took them 15 minutes to get the last lap in because <laughs> they tried to kill each other. And then there was a fight. Some to do with the days. I'm not sure who, but it was pretty ugly there for a little bit. They had, had to get the police involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard it uh, finished. I thought it was almost three wide. Coming to the strike. It was, yeah, they, well, that's what kept happening. They'd restart and they'd go three wide off the one. And of course, somebody works. had to lose that situation. <laughs> yeah. so. That never works. Never but they're, they're, they're a little Mazda powered cars and they're pretty quick. I mean, I, you know, like I said, a few more of them would be a pretty good class, I have yeah. to admit. So good show. Yep. And the last one there in Mobile without letting the cat out of the bag. I don't want to do that too early. Uh, the Crown Vix, uh had 21 cars in that field. That's and crazy. Uh, Chris Rummel from uh, down South Florida, around the Tampa area. Dave Nolan and Tyler Young are the top three. And um, we're going to get into a little spotlight here at the end uh, before we sign off. We're going to we're going to hold off on that. And I think we've got a pretty big double hitter coming up right here in our backyard this coming weekend. I heard something about that. Just a little something, something, <laughs> yeah. but twin one hundreds. Yeah, with a heck of a bonus. I mean, last year was the SRX. Yes, but this year it's a package. Like wow, because they're going to get. <laughs> It's ten grand per race, yeah. And start. then the package that they get it for the best average finish for the Snowball Derby includes four sets of tires, yeah. eight pit passes, fuel, and uh, a body from Five Star. Yeah. And crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's probably ten grand worth of stuff right there, and yeah. that's that's pretty cool. They didn't have to do that, but that's pretty neat that they did it. Cause yeah. whoever gets that, you know, that's going to help them run the snowball derby. A whole lot. That, that that's, uh, about the, that I believe it's an eight tire race to begin with, isn't it? So yeah, got, but you ain't kind of the stacks of practice tires. Oh, yeah, these guys man, buy. Just, I mean, gee, <laughs> as far as that goes, I, I, that's, you know, not to, we'll get into this, that part of this later, but I think they need to limit the practice a little bit, save these teams a little bit of money and it'll, you'll get more, even more teams that'll come down because, yeah. If you know you're going to come down, you're going to have to buy 20 sets of tires to practice on, and you're not going to be competitive, you're not coming. Yeah, yeah. But that's a story for another day. But this race coming up this weekend has always been great. I mean, you know, a few years ago, Bubba come from 17th yeah. and won the first one and then broke a right front suspension running the top five and hit the wall, which is the fender we have in our studio, Indeed. autographed by our boy Bubba Pollard. Yep. That's where we got yeah. that. And uh, last year, Bubba had the best average finish and made the SRX race. Yeah. Speaking Which, of the folks that are going to be there, why don't we find out who that is? Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about it. <laughs> let's just take a – and this is not necessarily – the order I'm going to read these off is going to be the car number. So don't get excited if you don't you don't hear about your your driver to begin with. 
Starts off with Z08 of Tony Elrod. Number two, well, there's several of those, but one one of them is going to be the Minnesota Missile, William Sawalich. Then John Bolin. Uh, can't do uh, <laughs> can't do it like uh, our announcer does, but Jackson Boone. You got Justin Kreider, Travis Braden, Jordan Riddick, Hunter Robbins, uh, local, Ryan Herbert, Gio Ruggiero. Let me get that right. <laughs> He'll nail that one. Billy Van Meter, William Byron's, you know, somebody that they're, everybody's talking about, but I got to tell you, it's not necessarily a given that he's going to do that well. And then next, obviously, our man, Bubba Pollard and Timothy Watson, Hunter Wright, Stuart Dutton, Dustin Smith, Michael Goddard, Jeremy Doss, Jet Noland, Stephen Nassie, Jake Finch, Derek Thorne, who is going to be uh, driving a different vehicle this year. He, he doesn't have his old team, the Campbell's Motorsports. Uh, Connor Sutton, Matt Craig, and Michael Hind. That is going to be a stout field. That's what we have so far. We don't Connor know Sutton is going to be trying yeah. to make that race. Yes, yep. he is. <laughs> I'll tell you somebody, man, that we haven't really talked about. And has done relatively decent is that Tony Elrod. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's been all over the map. He's been to most of the uh, ASA races, but he's been to a lot of the big super late model shows this year. And he, I mean, he was running decent at OP. I think he huh. finished top 10 at OP. I mean, he's really, that's somebody that, that we might want to talk to because I think he's somebody that's sneaking in there and, and going to steal the thunder here before too long. Yeah. I got a feeling he's pretty good. But that, that was neat that Connor Sutton's going to try to make this race. I'm a Connor Sutton fan, I'll admit yeah. it. But oh, yeah. <laughs> that that's a stellar field of cars. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, you got to survive Friday night, get the car ready, and then come back and survive Saturday night. So yeah. it's going to be a show. Yeah, there's quite a few of them uh, that you can pinpoint and pull out. And one of them just top off my head just come in there's uh, Travis Braden, uh, 2019 Snowball Derby winner. Yes. is going to be yes. in the Jet Nolan number nine car right. this weekend. So you know, we've, we've talked to all these guys, we pulled these names out, and just the ones that disappear for a little bit that come back, they're just as big as the ones we've been mentioning. That's it. <laughs> yep. I mean, it, you know, like I said, that field is full of, I mean, look at uh, the 24 car. He's the um, he's the winningest cup driver right now. I think he's got the most of anybody with four wins yeah. this year. And yeah. the dude's leading the points in the Cup Series. And he's going to come down here and have some fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, how many times has he come close to winning a Snowball Derby? Quite a few. I don't think he ever got him one, but he, no, he's, I mean, yeah, I think he wants one and he's rented one of those, uh, fast Wilson motorsports cars. And I'll tell you something else too that I noticed last time. Next time we go out there Friday, Saturday night, listen to Steven Nassie's car. It sounds like one of the Wilson's cars. I've been noticing lately. I think he's done went, figured out their exhaust or something. It's his car sounds about like one of theirs, but yeah. that's a stellar field of late models. And y'all come out, bring somebody with you, go to this yeah. race because you're going to be entertained both Friday and Saturday night. Um, the food's decent at the track. It's going to be a good show. Come out and watch, man, because I'm telling you, you're gonna you're gonna miss out if not. I mean, there there are some names in there like Jordan Riddick, uh, the uh, Hunter Wright. He's from Lebanon, Tennessee. We don't know that much about him yet, but there again, that's <laughs> it's a good lineage. He comes from a good location. Yeah. Michael Goddard, you know, just folks who haven't talked to talked about a lot, but we may be talking about him pretty soon. Yeah, isn't that Hunter Wright been one that shared that um, that War Rackley? The uh, twenty-five and twenty-six combination. Um, he is it, it might have. Uh, I'm not. I can't confirm or yeah. deny that, sir. Twenty-nine this uh, weekend, but uh, know, yeah. Then I, no, I, I don't think it is. Then I, 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 I'm wrong there. Yep. Well, the Rackley War cars are mainly pro cars. Yeah. I think they do run. They, they venture out into some super stuff, but I think they're mainly just pro cars. But that is a field of late models. I mean, as good as Connor Sutton is in an outlaw car. Hey, you never know. I mean, I mean, the outlaw's got the horsepower that the supers have just on a smaller tire, and you put him on the tire and let him dig. You know, you just never know. I would love to see Connor Sutton get a great because I like, like I said, I'm a Connor Sutton fan. But Derek Thorne, Snowball yeah. Derby winner. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's there's the field's real with Snowball Derby winners and great super late model racers. So yes. we're excited about this weekend. Going to be so exciting to watch. Yeah, and, and like you say, you got to survive Friday to make it to Saturday. So do you kind of? Have a little cautious approach, or do you just no? Because go, you go gotta to you gotta get the race? best average finish. So there, yeah. you know, you gotta either win or run in the top five, and then do the same thing again Saturday night. Right. Just stay out of wrecks. <laughs> That's always the fun part. Yep. I gotta bring my little Jaws theme with me for Bubba because he's always in Blizzard. He's the winningest <laughs> Blizzard series driver we have. And he's got more Blizzard championships than anybody else. So go Bubba. Yeah. While we're while we're at it, we did the uh, Mobile. Uh, Saturday night and this doubleheader coming up five five flags. 
for our listeners, Jim, uh, talk about the difference between the two tracks. Mobile is bigger. It's a half mile, I think, on the inside, where right. Five Flags is a half mile on the outside. And Five Flags is more turns than it is straightaway. Mobile is more straightaway than it is turns. In other words, you got longer straightaways. Mobile, Mobile, you 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 probably run less gear. I mean, I ran the same gear at both tracks, and I was hitting the chip a little early, but it is what it is. But you got to sail through the corners. And Pensacola is more about handling than Mobile is. Mobile is more of a horsepower track. You got a big motor over there. You can slow down for the corners, but Pensacola, it's all turns. That's that's the two biggest differences between Five Flags Speedway and Mobile. And Mobile was paved in 2005. Pensacola hadn't been paved since 1973. <laughs> yeah, and don't pave out. it yet because I like that old girl just the way she is. Well, all the cracks and all, <laughs> all that oh, stuff. Yeah, and pieces of chunk coming up. Had to repave <laughs> the front straightaway, of course. But because, oh, yeah, I don't. I think they. I don't see any paving coming this way in our yeah. backyard. Maybe it's a little grinding. Well, they do that uh, like diamond yeah. grinding or something. They just kind of uh, shave yeah. it up a little There's bit. There's not yeah, a lot left. <laughs> There's not a lot left to no, shave. I think. It, I think in the next two to three years, that old girl's going to have to be paved, and I think they're just waiting to see what happens. But yeah. you know, I hate to see it because it's just going to make us go a lot faster and. You know, it's going to, everybody's going to have plenty of grip and there's not going to be a lot of passing. It's just no. going to be nose to tail racing, kind of like the old Bristol. You had to put a bumper to somebody to move them. But, you know, it, Five Flags is a great racetrack. So is Mobile. I'm glad to see Mobile back open. I hope Eddie wish him all the luck in the world that that place grows. Um, nothing against Gina. We're, we're sad to see her go, yes. but there was some contractual issues that I understand that was the problem. I don't know 100% to talk more than that about it, but. You know, hopefully she'll be around and at least help out. Yeah, but give us some more talk about it, too. <laughs> Indeed. Absolutely. Mobile Absolutely. being in action. You know, it used yeah. to be Mobile uh, on Saturday night, for Five Flags here Friday night, and the guys would come in and they'd run the weekend at two different tracks. Yeah. So now it looks like we might be able to be able to talk about that again. Yeah. Well, I remember in 2005, I'd run Pensacola on Friday night, take the same tires, go over to Mobile on Saturday night, and I'd run second or third, and I think third paid $150. And all it cost me to go over was fuel in the truck and a little bit of, I didn't run racing fuel back then, I run pump gas. So it was cheap. I'd go over and make, I was making money on Saturday nights. <laughs> so Mobile's a great place. Congrats, like I said, Eddie, Eddie Shoemaker, you guys did a great job Saturday night, even with all the pitfalls. You and J Jason were jumped on everything, got things figured out, and we're glad to have you around. And uh, we hope that many, many more success. They did say in the driver's meeting that, this year is just going to be abbreviated season. Next year, they got a lot of big plans, so we will see what happens. Well, I hope it all works out for them because that's a great place to get around. <laughs> it is. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's that place is historic, just like Five Flags. It's been there since the fifties. It needs to stay open. <laughs> it's not too much fun to leave because when you do, you go straight to the fence. Well, <laughs> you know, there used to be back in the day, you could they'd open the back straightaway. It was a gate back there, and you could go down this little dirt road and escape out on Highway ninety. I don't know why they don't do that again. Yeah. To help relieve traffic, because I mean it's one way in, one way out. And there's, there's when you come in that place, it's a one road. There's, yep. you, you ain't coming in when people are going out. It's just, it's just that narrow. I don't know if they can widen that road or figure something out. But there's nowhere to put it because nope. it goes right by the drag strip. It's one lane right there by the drag. They can't go out on the railroad tracks. Nope. So really, they're kind of stuck there unless they build something across the railroad tracks to get you over to or a tunnel under the road tracks they ain't never going to happen with csx you will never tunnel under a railroad track yeah. at all period i've had to push pipe under a railroad track before and the 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 paperwork you have to do to do that is insane but anyway they just i don't know if they could figure a way down that maybe offer to help pave that road back there or something yeah. And let people out the back stretch. Because I remember when I used to go over there in 05, that's what they would do. Cop would go open that gate back there, and we'd all haul ass over the back and go back yep. the back way. I mean, there's yep. got to be, you got to relieve the traffic. Other than that, everything else there was, like I said, they did a great job. They're going to get the grandstands fixed. Jason Smith and them are doing good. Yeah, I remember when that uh, the bridge uh, all going to the track was not done for the longest time. We called it the bridge to nowhere. <laughs> yeah, you had to you had to get off and go down 90 and yep. then go down that little two-lane road and we, yeah. weave your way back to the race. Oh, that was a nightmare. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> it's, so, it's easier to get to now, but it's just it's only one road in and out. I don't know if they could ever, you know, maybe maybe do something, a road on the back straightaway out to the towards the drag strip and cross the drag strip and go that way. I don't know. I mean, I I, I don't know. Something's got to happen. It, yeah, it would oh, help. Yeah. You know, yeah, they maybe. need to do something. But yeah. well, uh, I know we had a million dollar yeah, worth of fun at Eldora this week. <laughs> Somebody did. 
<laughs> yeah, we we touched on that uh, uh, an episode or so ago. We uh, we need to get to that million dollar winner. Uh, I believe his name was Logan Shukart. Uh Take home a million uh, two thousand twenty three dollars <laughs> for a fifty lap shootout at Eldora, and that was the second, I think, of three big events there at Eldora in Ohio. You know? Yeah, they had the King's Royal. In which Donnie Schatz won his seventh, mm. sixth, excuse Six, me, a sixth. Yeah. The record is seven set by the king yes. of sprint cars, Steve Kinzer. Yes. He's <laughs> one away from topping or tying Steve Kinzer. How cool is that? I've seen a picture of him dressed and they put you in a, you know, king's outfit and you got a <laughs> scepter and, and I saw Tony Stewart with him in victory lane. I thought, you know how cool that is. Yeah, I've heard Tony Stewart's campaigning to get a NASCAR race at Eldora. Well, he had a truck race, but you know what happened when he brought out SRX, NASCAR got pissed at him because it was like the same week he announced SRX, NASCAR announced they weren't coming back to Eldora. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Tony's not a very, you know, one to back away from fussing at NASCAR because, you know, (laughs) he's not too political. No, he's he's not, he's not a very polite person when you (laughs) piss him off, but I don't blame him. I mean, but NASCAR could work with SRX series. That was, that was, you know, Denny Hamlin won the one up at Stafford. Mm. That was a good show. You know, me and Thomas were talking about before we got started, you know, they, they need to do something about the NASCAR drivers. I don't think yeah. you need as many active NASCAR drivers in SRX. Right. If they want to run super late model races and they want to pay for them, that's fine. This is a series that should be for either retired drivers, yeah. Yeah. drivers that are uh, maybe new or uh, up and coming, or short track guys like Bubba Pollard and, and yes. Doug Kobe. And, you know, go to those tracks and pick two drivers. Right. The, that running, you know, more, the they can't run yeah. street stocks, right. of course. They got to be able to drive, you know, something with plenty of horsepower, like modifieds or super late models and put them in there. I think it would make it a better show. Yeah. Austin Dillon and Daniel Suarez are not superstars. I'm sorry, but I'm <laughs> no. just going to stand by no. it. And, and, and I, I would go as far as saying Ryan Priest as well. But Ryan Priest would fall into that Doug Kobe, Bubba Pollard yeah, kind of yes, category. Because yeah, yes. he he's not one up. of those really consistent full-time cup drivers that we that you see up front all the time, like Keselowski and all those guys. Uh, but Daniel Suarez and Austin Dillon, they are not superstars. <laughs> I agree. And I, I like I said, it should be what it was originally designed for, not to be a super NASCAR series. It should be for local drivers, retired drivers. I mean, you know, I agree with Kevin Harvick doing it because I, I, I like Harv. I think he, but he's a short track guy. Harvick owns several short track teams. He owns late model teams. So that's, that's cool. Yeah. And speaking of that real quick, I just want to bring this up. You know, his late model team won one of the cars tour races and got tossed Ooh. and he owns part of the cars tour. Oops. <laughs> so that I like that. The fact that he'll let that happen. Yeah. I'll give, I'm going to give him a big shout out for that. But Kevin Harvick, I, I'd like to see him do it. I think it's cool that, that uh, somebody retired and, and a couple of those guys that were there drove the 07 car. Um, uh, Clint Boyer. Right. I, I'd love to see. Clint Boyer is just a racer. He just He's just balls to the wall. Let's get it done. Have fun. Ken Schrader is another one that I thought was really cool that they're letting him run this year. Carl Edwards. <laughs> I would love to see Carl do it. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big Carl Edwards fan, but, you know, he's he wants to drive. You can tell. But his oh, wife, yeah. <laughs> you know, I found out his wife was a brain surgeon. Yikes. She's a nurse. She's a neuro brain surgeon, and she after a couple of wrecks he had, and NASCAR yeah. kind of screwed him twice. I think she went, you know, Carl, you've made, you know, twenty five million dollars. You got that sitting in the bank, and you're still going to get royalties from stuff they sell with your name on it. Maybe it's time you retire. And Carl went. Well, I I think I can sum that up. He went for a checkup. And his wife happened to be the doctor, and she pulled the chip from his head. That's what made that decision. The chip? I the chip. You. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh-huh. The racing chip yeah. came out of his head and said, you know, honey, I think you're right. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so, because you should have seen him at Darlington. He was walking around like, I want to do this again, I want to do this again, I want to do this again, I want to do this again. <laughs> I want to go fast, so, I want to go fast. Yeah, I want to go, I want to go race. But the, the SRX series is, is doing good. I'm glad to see it. I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, Denny Hamlin wanted it. He, he talked about it on his podcast that he had the trophy sitting there and was bragging about it. But <laughs> I mean, I like the idea, but we don't need as many cup drivers. Maybe one per race, maybe two per race. That's it. Everybody else needs to be from the short track that they're going to. They need to do that. I think they should stick with that format. It's better. Yeah, it'll be Thursday Night Thunder, ESPN, uh, Stafford, because um, they had uh, some flooding going on in Vermont and they had to re- rearrange the schedule. And, and they were already there at Stafford last week, so I think it made sense. Just to um, stay there. Just to stay there. And, uh, you know, we'll do it again at Stafford. and. Um, 
Ryan Priest and, and Daniel Suarez will be there uh, this weekend. So you, you talking to me, man? Yeah, <laughs> he's from um, down around the south of the border, man. So I just I just want to back up a little bit and just say Logan Shukart with that congratulations for the million dollar win uh, at Eldora. Carson Macedo, Brad Sweet, and David Gravel, Enrico Abreu round out the top five. And I do want to do the David Gravel because Jim said they might be there because we were giving a shout out to the drivers from Florida. And David Gravel comes with a fourth place finish there at Eldora. So kudos and congratulations to the top five there, and especially Logan for taking that million dollars home. I bet he was heavy. <laughs> I bet that fourth place paid pretty good. I'm sure it probably made it worth his trip from Florida to go up there. And then, of course, Rico Abreu, he's our favorite little guy. He's Man, that dude can wheel a race car. I don't understand why somebody hasn't moved him up. I think he needs to be in the upper echelon. I, I think that would be super cool to see him win a cup race. Yeah, every one of those drivers got talent. Just you know, well, you know, I was I was going to say this: if if David Gravel won that race, would he change his name to David Gravel? I mean, he'd have a million dollars. I mean, you know, just saying. He might. He I might. Know. Might have just talked him into it. Yeah, David Gravel. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. He, he could sound like a Formula One driver then. Yeah, instead of racing dirt track sprint cars. But hey, that was awesome, man. That was a, that was a great show and a million dollars. Can you imagine? I mean, oh, no, a million yeah. dollars for winning a sprint car race, and they had a late model dream. That's, but you know what? El, and El, they said that Eldora broke a record for attendance at that million dollar mm. uh, 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 World of Outlaws race or, or sprint car race. Yeah, I, there was three huge events there, pretty much back to back to back. They had the late models, uh, and then the sprint cars, and then the sprint cars again uh, for the Kings Royals, but Donnie Shots. That'd be a bucket list to buy tickets to go through all three of those events. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, but Eldora, period, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I just, Anytime. I just want to go there and eat one of those bologna, fried bologna sandwiches <laughs> I hear so much about and watch, get some dirt in, in your beer and yeah, watch some cars go around. Right. A little dust on your face. <laughs> I would love to see NASCAR go back there because that, that's what they should do. Hell, putting dirt on Bristol. Let's go to Eldora. Actual dirt track. A dirt track. You could bring in t- enough temporary grandstands to make it worth NASCAR's while. Yeah. And run a dadgum cup race on a true dirt track and put some real dirt racers in there. I mean, do do another Jonathan Davenport. Maybe when uh, Scott Bloomquist gets healed up from his surgery, strap him in one of them. Yeah, look <laughs> and, out. And you know what <laughs> yes. would be cool, though? I would have a dirt racer feature. Yes. In the cup cars with nothing but dirt racers. Ooh, wow, that'd be great. Tony Stewart yeah. Yeah. put, uh, you know, somebody like Dave Gravel, um, you know, uh, I just said his name, uh the Davenport, yep. put all those guys in about a 10, 10 of them and do a do a 25-lap feature and let's see who comes out on top. Like a trophy dash. Yeah, <laughs> that, that would be cool. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move to the, the the segment that we've been involved with. Uh, this is our third week, the uh, Crown Vic Spotlight of the Week, the Driver of the Week. Story and Black. Yes, roofing. Story and Black Roofing. Crown Vic Driver of the Week. And he happens to be the guy that won Mobile Saturday night. I was standing in my pit area, and he was waiting to go out to practice, and I climbed over the wall, and I stuck my head in the car, and I said, man, how would you like to be our Crown Vic uh, Spotlight Driver of the Week? And he thought it was neat. So we, we, uh, I talked to him, and I had him give me a little bio on him. So here we go. <laughs> he is from around Tampa, Florida. His name is Chris Rummel, number 52. He's Crown Vicks and races pro trucks. He races at Auburndale. He was the Auburndale 2022 champion in the Crown Vic class. He's raced many enduro races. He has 20 Crown Vic wins. Yes. So that's pretty good. And he also won the first Crown Vic race at Five Flags Speedway, which at Five Flags we call them Crown Stocks. But we call this the Crown Vic deal because we're going to travel different racetracks. So that's why we're Crown Vic. He is a firefighter and an EMT, which God bless him for that. We we always support the thin blue line and the thin red line. We're thankful for the, the job that he does because that's a pretty, t- pretty tough job. He is uh, also 29 years old and his team is Godspeed Motorsports. Gotta love it. <laughs> uh, but he he didn't put a big whooping on him like he did at Five Flags. Now, I'm going to tell you, Dave Nolan was there. All Chris Rummel had to do was slip. And Dave Nolan had been all over him like white on rice. I promise you. That was a heck of a show. And, you know, our normal Crown Vic guys did a great job in the top five. So Chris Rummel is our spotlight Crown Vic driver of the week. Um, like I said, get out there and, and get you a Crown Vic and race, and you can become our spotlight 
Crown Vic Driver of the Week. We're going to do this every week. Special thank you again to Story and Black Roofing. Uh, Ryan Black was our first Crown Vic Driver of the Week. Of course, yes. you know, he he, sp- he sponsors the class in Pensacola and Mobile, Sponsors helps sponsor our podcast. So uh, we want to thank them for this segment. And uh, let's get after it, y'all. That Crown Vic class is growing like like a weed, and let's keep it growing. Yes. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Blake, uh, Dave Nolan, and Chris Rummel, the top three here, uh, week one, two, and three, uh, episode 46, 47, 48. Now, um, man, it's just going to keep getting bigger just like the class is. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, the racing in this area is, I mean, you know, people say asphalt racing's dying out. I'm telling you, Saturday night proved it didn't, and we're going to keep building on this, and uh, we're going we're gonna to make it better. Yeah, we're going to continue to do that. We've got merch coming out. We're excited for that next week. Um, so stay tuned for that. We're all going to spread that out and uh, get the Short Track Guys podcast world even hotter um, than it is in Florida. And uh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to give a shout out to uh, McDonald Muffler. Thank you so much for being on board and uh, supporting us. And, uh, of course, all of our listeners, you are what makes it happen. Uh, you're you're uh, you are our motivation, as we always say. And guys, it's always a pleasure to get to it talk is. short track racing every week. And um, we're gonna we're gonna sign it off. The, One second before oh, we do. All right, give us a five star review, guys. If you're on your whether it's Spotify or whatever, give us a five star. It helps us move up in the charts. It helps us grow. Um, give us a review on Apple iTunes, and I'm sure if Thomas sees a review on there, he'll read it out for and whoever sends it in. We would appreciate it. Um, and, and most of all, send us a, a message and see if there's anything you want on here. If you got a driver you want to see on here, we can talk to, or, or somebody that's up and coming and you think maybe we should talk to them, give us, give us a shout out and give us any idea that you have. We want to hear them. Yeah, please. absolutely. So yeah, we ready. More the merrier. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Brandon. Have a good night, everybody. Be strong, America. Thanks for listening.